Originally, I was just talking about this. I developed this testimony time in five minutes. And I kind of wondered, and you don't have to answer, but I wondered if anyone understood why I did that. I won't call anybody. I just want you to think about it in your head for a moment to think, I wonder why he did that. Or why does that guy have an altar call? I wonder why he does that. Well, this is your home. This is God's house, our sanctuary. It's a place of love. It's a safe place. And it's, it's a house of God that he blesses us with, doesn't he? Now, if you come forward and you profess Jesus here, maybe you'll have the strength out there to do it. Many times in our life, we're reserved. Maybe out of fear. Maybe we don't know what to say. Maybe we're not sure what to say. Maybe we have fear that somebody would say something back. But we're not used to giving a testimony. We're not used to saying things uh, because of fears or something like that. When you're enveloped in the love, this is the place, this is the training room. This is where you can know it's safe to be able to do that. If you read with me in God's Word, Joshua 4, 1 through 7 and 24. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean, passed over, the, over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take ye twelve men out of the people, out of the, every tribe of man, command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men, whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe of man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and take you up, every man of you, a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That this may be a sign upon you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall ask them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever, that all the children of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that ye might fear the Lord your God forever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, teach us how our testimony is important today. How the, the testimony that these men, by carrying those stones on their shoulder, that testimony survives forever. Teach us through your message. Open our hearts and minds by the power of the Holy Spirit to understand today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So Joshua tw chooses 12 men, one from each tribe of Israel, and commands them to take a man, uh, a stone. These stones become a pillar of testimony to the miracle power of God abiding the Jordan and delivering the children of Israel. It's required every man take a stone upon his shoulder. In other words, every man had to carry his own uh, stone out of that river, and that was his testimony. Revelations 12, 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. Don't ever think that your testimony is not important. According to the word of God, you are made and overcome by the blood of Jesus and by your testimony. Amen. Romans 8, 37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. More than conquerors. More. Because I didn't just get delivered. I didn't just get healed. I didn't just make it through the Jordan River. I didn't just make it through the fire and the flood. I've got a testimony. Joshua said every man must carry his own testimony. It's the blood of the Lamb and um, the testimony that makes you an overcomer. Your testimony is what makes you valuable to the kingdom. Your testimony makes you dangerous, powerful. Your testimony is what makes you a threat to hell. You see, it's not just that you came through it, that what made it through, and what makes you a threat to Satan, it's that you came through it. 
There's power in understanding that. In other words, your, very, your personal victory through your battles benefits nobody but you. But when you open your mouth and you declare the faithfulness of God and declare the mercy of God that delivers you, restores you, and sets you free, your testimony becomes a weapon. Your testimony is the sword in your hand. Your testimony becomes the instrument of power to set the captives free. Amen. Your testimony becomes a lifeline to someone who is sinking. If they know you and they know your testimony, that's going to benefit them. Oh, I got a testimony. Many of God's people have been shamed into hiding their testimony. Many of God's people are afraid to give their testimony. The devil makes you think about it. Says, well, hey, if you talk about that, I'll open up that door and push you back in it. You'll fall back into that pit. I'll scare you into it. And then out of that fear, we, we clam up. We don't want to say anything. That's nothing but the spirit of fear manipulating and intimidating you. Because the devil knows the power of your testimony. He knows the power of your testimony. Do you know the power of your testimony? Trust me. He doesn't want you to share it. I do. God does. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The devil wants you to keep your mouth shut because he knows your testimony has power to bring life, to bring hope, to bring joy, to bring peace, to bring restoration, and to bring deliverance. Amen? You have a lot of power that I don't think we know. I have a testimony. Now, if I get too fired up today, we might be Pentecostal, so just bear with me. But it's my testimony. I own it. I didn't borrow it from anybody. I'm not trying to copy anybody. Everybody in here has their own testimony. At times I feel like I wasn't going to make it. At times I feel like I was going to lose my mind. At times I felt like I was going to die. But I made it. The attack didn't kill me. The divorce didn't kill me. The drugs didn't kill me. The sickness didn't kill me. The car wreck didn't kill me. The ministry was attacked. The character was attacked. My finances are attacked. But it didn't kill me. I'm still standing. I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I walked through the fire of furnace. But I didn't burn up. I walked through the deep water. I didn't drown. You start to get to power. You start to see it. I heard the devil say, I'm going to kill you. I'm still here. Healed, delivered, set free, and I'm preaching the gospel. Praise God. I got a testimony for a season. I had to fight hell every day of my life for my future, for my destiny. And there were times I felt like giving up. And there were times I felt like I couldn't make it. And there were people who said I wouldn't make it. And there were people who had written me off. But God gave me a testimony. God raised me up. God healed me. And I got delivered from the hand of the enemy. Praise God. You've heard things like this in your life or in situations. You know that person shouldn't have made it out of that car wreck. The officer on the scene said it was impossible for somebody to survive. Or you shouldn't have su uh, survived that drug overdose. There's no way. Or you lost your house, your car, your money. Probably lost your mind at one point. Others went through a lot less and they're probably in prison. People say that. You shouldn't have survived that attack on the ministry. You shouldn't have gotten that position that they gave you at your job. Others are more qualified. You shouldn't be living in that kind of house, driving that kind of car, making that kind of money. Statistics say, man, from your background, you should be on food stamps and living in the projects. But for God, but for God, He's healed me. But God has delivered me. God has promoted me. God has protected me. God has anointed me. Amen. Can you feel it? There's a lot of power in here. There's three Hebrew children and a great miracle. When God delivered them from the fiery furnace. The most valuable thing uh, was the miracle. That gave them their testimony. Because the miracle was theirs alone. And only benefited them. And it was for that day and for that problem only. But with their testimony, it still brings hope to the helpless, brings strength to the weak, healing to the sick, deliverance to the bound and the oppressed. 